Hello friends, welcome to another video from Somos Biology and in this video we are going to talk about an antibiotic and uh, that is rifaximin. Rifaximin is an antibiotic which is a kind of a modern day antibiotic which is being used against uh, one modern day disease known as IBS, Irritable Bowel Syndrome and basically there is no cure for the disease right now. Rifaximin is the antibiotic to go to prevent IBS and to manage IBS symptom. So if you want to know more about Rifaximin antibiotic dosage, Rifaximin mechanism of action and Rifaximin uses and side effects then this video is just for you. So this Rifaximin antibiotic is really costly right now and uh, this antibiotic is only antibiotic to go against the traveler's diarrhea it's going against the IBS because it has multiple array of mechanism which we are going to discuss in a moment. So let's start with the general properties of rifaximin antibiotic. It's completely different kind you know it's not uh, something that you probably uh, read in your college or school. So it uh, treats traveler's diarrhea or irritable bowel syndrome IBS particularly IBS diarrhea type. There are two types of IBS. IBS diarrheal and IBS constipation. So basically it's used in the IBS D type. Uh, it prevents the growth of bacteria that can cause diarrhea. Growth of, you know, overgrowth of some bacteria, methanogens, which can produce methane, which can produce ammonia and all these gases in the intestine. So to prevent that. Rifaximin treats uh, hepatic encephalopathy as well by stopping the growth of bacteria that produces toxins and may worsen the liver disease. So there are these two situations where we are using rifaximin right now. One in IBS and traveler's diarrhea that is you know traveler's diarrhea is related to IBS D and in hepatic encephalopathy where the liver toxicity may increase but in this case uh, this antibiotic can decrease the production of toxins there. What is the mechanism of action of rifaximin? There are several areas of how it's basically working. It prevents the microbial overgrowth in the intestine, uh, decreases gut permeability and releases uh, and decreases the release of pro-inflammatory cytokines. So the destruction of self tissue can be inhibited, helps improving cognition and neuromuscular coordination as well as helps improving renal function. So basically you can see the presence of this antibiotic, it works on the liver, it works on brain, it works on kidney, it works on gut. In gut what it does actually prevents the overgrowth of some bacteria by targetedly killing them and allowing rest of the good bacteria to survive that is good for gut health okay now it also decreases the liver toxicity that's why we can prescribe it for the hepatic encephalopathy on the other hand in brain it increases what the cognition and neuromuscular coordination and in kidney improve the renal function okay so all these features are done by this rifaximin antibiotic. So basically when I say antibiotic, this rifaximin is not only acting as an antibiotic but also as a chemical factor which is going to allow different organs of our body to properly act and to properly function. Okay, so it's a, it has a multi-dimensional role and it reduces endotoxins, ammonia levels in the body. Okay, so what happens actually you know uh, Normally what happens when there is the presence of pathogens in the gut, okay, in intestine, what they do is that they cause and they cause uh, different, they release different tissue degrading materials that destroys the tissue cementing of uh, our cells and as a result there are injuries and that causes bleeding, that causes the neutrophil extravation there, so neutrophil comes in, other uh, immune system cells comes in and start releasing components. And all these components that are being released there, they are causing the harm, they are destroying the tissue. So as a result of which there is a lot of pain, inflammation at that area, swelling at that area, internal swelling and all these things. And if it's going on in your gut, then there will be spasm, pain and so many things. But rifaximin inhibits the recruitment of excessive neutrophil and it prevents the release of pro-inflammatory cytokines. And as a result of which what it does actually, it... Uh, restores uh, the mucosal cells in this particular example. Similarly, you can see that uh, the rifaximin prevents the gut microbial dysbiosis. Dysbiosis is when bad microbes in the gut increase in the amount than the good microbes. Basically, they are all present uh, in harmony and good microbes are present in higher, higher amount than the bad one. That is the good thing about uh, our gut and that's how our gut is being prevented. When you eat yogurt and other things related and filled with lactobacillus species or other good bacteria it's healthy it helps in maintaining a healthy gut but what happens is that due to the presence of some foreign pathogen coming in and they destabilize this then rifaximin what it does actually it causes the 
strengthening of the tight junction that stitches the cells together side by side and that reduces the gut permeability. Normally, if the tight junctions are weak, then the gut permeability will be increased and bacteria can go inside, okay? And uh, they have the LPS layers coming out from the um, gram-negative bacteria and they are going to, uh, you know, signal the antigen-presenting cells and they are going to release uh, interleukins and those interleukins are going to target different tissues of the body and that even increases gut permeability, tight junctions, proteins are destroyed. So many things are going on at this moment and as a result, there is a weak condition of the gut and that leads to, you know, uh, irritation of the gut. And if the gut is irritated, then that person will feel cramping all the time. There will be inflammation, so there will be pain, cramping and the person will go to the toilet again and again and again. So basically, we call it as a non-specific diarrhea. Because there is no particular cause, there is no causative agent coming from outside. Basically, there is a dysbiosis of bacteria in the gut as a result of which it triggers a chain reaction and that causes non-specific diarrhea. So, in this case, uh, even, uh, you know, there is no microorganism causing this, but still a person may go to 10-12 times to the, you know, toilet. And that is a big problem and that causes other issues of the body. Okay, so as a result, if rifaximin is present, tight junction proteins are uh, tightened that reduces the gut, that, that increases uh, the chance of proper interaction to the neighboring cells, that reduces gut permeability, that reduces pro-inflammatory cytokine and also as a result of which bone and joint destruction can be minimized. Otherwise, with this effect of gut microbiota dysbiosis, there are TNF alpha, tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin 23, interleukin 6, interleukin 17a. These components can go to target tissue which are generally joints and bones and those will be destroyed as well. Those can be destroyed as well. So in that case, presence of rifaximin can limit the targeted destruction of cartilages and bone, particularly the joints of the body. That is also very, very important. What are the clinical uses of uh, this rifaximin antibody? So see, rifaximin is generally not used just as an antibiotic. It is used in so many ways. It helps to maintain a healthy kidney, healthy liver, healthy brain, as well as healthy gut. The clinical use, as I mentioned earlier, these are all, all, all the uses, you know, uh, hepatic inflammatory, pro-inflammatory cytokine decrease, uh, ammonia concentration decreased, okay, improved neural cognition. Uh, and uh, what happens actually? The, without the rifaximin, small bowel bacterial overgrowth, increased gut permeability, and uh, fecal secondary bile acids are found, but the presence of rifaximin decreases all of this. So clinical use is to treat traveler's diarrhea, uh, treating IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, diarrhea type, used in non-specific diarrhea, which is, you know, traveler's diarrhea is a kind of non-specific diarrhea, okay? And uh, clinically, there is no relevant resistance found yet, so that is another blessing for us to use rifaximin all the time with patients, patients with IBSD, patients complaining uh, with the specific, uh, non-specific diarrhea and traveler's diarrhea, we can always use that. But there are some limitations, like generally more effective against gram-positive bacteria than gram-negative organism. But uh, the new research is also showing that, yeah, it's going against gram-negative organisms as well, because gram-negative organisms, they are producing, they are releasing lipopolysaccharide LPS layer, and this LPS layer is going to instigate and stimulate our immune system, particularly the antigen presenting cells are active and they are releasing uh, cytokines, they are going to targetedly damage different tissues of the body. So that can also be prevented. So basically, you can say that indirectly, it's also going up against the gram-negative bacteria. It appears ineffective in patients with fever and bloody stool or inflammatory or invasive pathogen. So if your diarrhea, you know, particularly people come with the complication of abdominal cramp, diarrhea, and all. So whenever a person comes with cramp and diarrhea, particularly in the country like India, then we always generally think about protozoal infection or we think about other bacterial infection, mostly a protozoal infection from water contamination. So generally treated with uh, metronidazole antibiotics or uh, generally mostly metronidazole antibiotics that, that are used for the treatment of that. But we need to understand and assess whether this diarrhea is uh, due to the uh, any invasive pathogen or not, like Campylobacter jejuni is an invasive pathogen that can cause diarrhea, Salmonella can cause diarrhea and severe problems. So in those cases, we, we, we should not use it because in that case, it will not be effective. It will only be effective if a person has a continuous diarrhea, you know, in a week, there's no reason basically, there's no change in chemical uh, food habit, there's no change in uh, the water drinking habit, the water is good, the food is good, everything's fine. Still, the person is facing this problem of diarrhea 
six seven times a day for like three four weeks that means it's a uh, something related to ibsd or i no, ibd it's those kind of treatments in that case once is the fact is established that the person is having ibs diarrheal type irritable bowel syndrome in that case uh, we use it, uh, this antibiotic rifaximin and that case rifaximin will be very much effective otherwise it will not be that effective okay so that's all the clinical use of rifaximin antibiotic now let's talk about the side effects of rifaximin as i mentioned that there is uh, this is well tolerated the resistance is not that much developed the side effects are also limited including nausea stomach pain dizziness excessive tiredness headache and muscle tightening joint pain so joint pain is something related uh, rare but nausea stomach pain these are some common side effect rest of them are rare and generally this is not related to generally we know that antibiotics are always related to abdominal cramp pain distress diarrhea and all these things but for rifaximin there is not a cause because this rifaximin itself is going to prevent the diarrhea so although it's really costly uh, nowadays with uh, like one or two different options available in the market but it's working really good against ibs and it's kind of the medicine to go it's kind of the antibiotic to go for the ibs diarrheal type patients okay so that's all about rifaximin antibiotic if you like this video about rifaximin antibiotic mechanism of action and rifaximin uses and rifaximin uh, side effects then hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel to get more and more videos like that in future thank you bye